But at this point, as promised, I want to introduce Sue Carmichael, who's uh, Gary's class of 1963, and actually a bunch of your classmates are here tonight. And uh, there's a display over here that they brought to invite you to look it over if you haven't already, but here's Sue. Good evening. On behalf of the class of 63, I would like to extend our sincere appreciation to Jim and the other SU classmates for keeping Gary's memory and spirit alive for over 50 years through the annual awarding of the Gary A. Scott Scholarship. Over the course of our years together, Gary, also called Scotty, of course it was a bridge, and was considered to be a quiet, respectful young man. In our senior year, he was voted most cooperative and most all around. He was a friend to all, had a great laugh, he was voted laughing boy of our class, a beautiful smile, neat dresser, beautiful eyes. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. I, oh, I was talking about Gary Scott. Oh, okay. You know the guy who always had the joke to tell and a prank to pull. Like the time he lit a Bunsen burner in the chemistry lab, he put it under the lab table, and when Macaulay sat down, he couldn't figure out why it was so hot. <laughs> and of course, Gary, being Gary, was just sitting there as calm as could be, waiting for the fireworks to start. He, and I'm sure there were probably a lot of other friends, but nobody wanted to tell me about them. So, Gary was a great football player, and his teammates said he always had their back on and off the field. Yes, Gary was a true leader, as evident by his leadership, not only on the football field, but on the golf course and in the whole field. He was a class officer for four years, involved in the student council, and the senior class play, playing none other than a president. He was involved in numerous class committees, an honor student, along with being a cafeteria worker and a stagehand. His love of music was evidenced by his participation in the Awakeneers, a select choral group, a boys chorus, and county chorus. The theme of our 1963 yearbook centered around the letter L. This letter stood not only for Leroy, but also the qualities of love, leadership, laughter, and loyalty, all of which personified Gary throughout his high school years and beyond. Making the posters which are on display tonight was like going back to 1963. I hope you take the opportunity, if you haven't, to look at the picture. There is one picture of the questionnaires or the Awakeners, where you will spot Brother David in the back row and Gary in front of them. Then for our most famous photo of all, the picture of Gary and his three buddies as ballerinas. And I'm proud to say that one of our last ballerinas is here tonight, Dave Lamondola. So Dave, <laughs> he promised he'd wear a tutu in the little bowl, but he chickened out. So this one skit took place during an assembly in 1962 and brought the house down. From that day forward, you ask people what they remember about Gary, they would say his smile and that ballet skit. The originator of the skit, herself a ballerina and classmate, Gail Rogers Welch, is with us tonight and would like to say a few words. There you go, Gail. <laughs> that had been 50 years. Um, I reflected on it a little differently. And um, David and I were thinking, how did we get four teenage boys to put on a tutu and a big bow on top of their head, as you will see in the picture? And I think um, Gary had the courage to do that. Um, and now I'm also thinking back um, that it, it, it took courage to do it. It also, um, reminds me that I continue to take class and I've seen a lot of people, beginners, come into my ballet class and try to do ballet moves, move their arms, move their feet. And a lot of them are really horrible at it. <laughs> but these guys came in and were really dedicated and you'll see in the pictures, they had nice arms. 
Their arms are in the, as we did it, their arms are above their head. There were no funky arms. They really did some very, very nice moves. They moved to the music. There, there was precision. They had the musicality. They had coordination. The athletic ability. Their ability to move together as a team. All the qualities that we've talked about kind of came through in a ballet performance. So the ultimate quality, I think, that made it the best was, even though we were having fun doing it, we all agreed that this was really going to be the funniest if they didn't giggle, they didn't laugh, and they didn't really come first round. They needed to be serious, and they needed some discipline. So we all agreed, not even a giggle, not even a smirk, do it straight. And as you'll see in the picture, and David will tell too, they didn't smile. They did it straight. They did it as true professional ballerinas. And it was really, really one of the funniest things I think the school had seen in many years. So I think in, in closing, all of the qualities we know and loved about Gary, his, his kindness, his dedication, his athletic ability, his music, his grace, his stature, his posture, everything kind of came to being the one on the stage to be one of the best ballerinas we had seen. And we're still celebrating that. He was our classmate, he was our friend, and we honor him tonight as well for all those things. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathy, would you like to? Uh, or, or, yeah. I wanted to say two things before we show the video, 183. First is to thank the Leroy Central School District, and in particular, Tim, Linda, and Sarah, uh, for putting this on. Tim said, whatever you want, we'll do. <laughs> He's a man of his word. So thank you very much. This is lovely. Um, second, the memory book is not a finished product. This is ongoing. If you have memories of Gary, please share them. The, the way we get, the world gets to know more of Gary is through these first-hand accounts. So please, if you can remember my email or jot it down, I forgot to put it in the booklet. Let's see if you remember. Amazing Grace, two G's, six, at live.com. Send me any of your memories. We can use them. Next. Bruce Bratton <clears throat> was 19 years old when he enlisted in the United States Army. All he knew then is he wanted to jump out of airplanes. After training for eight weeks, he became a medic, and he joined the 101st Airborne Division. <clears throat> in December of 1967, he met Gary, Scott, for Gary, and they very soon became good friends. And as immediately as their friendship began, so did Bruce's admiration for Gary. Um, Bruce wanted to be here. He lives in um, Alaska and couldn't make it here, but he did make a video for us to enjoy. Um, he will tell us about Gary's life, some of the things that he admired about Gary. He'll also tell us about Gary's death. Bruce was with Gary when he died. Um, in fact, Gary went into the field under enemy fire to enlist his life to save Bruce. So let's take a look at the video. December 1967, that's when I met Gary Scott. What a man. That's my connection to you and Leroy High School. Working for Gary was a privilege, an honor. You didn't work for Gary, you worked with Gary. And that is what made the man what he was. Incredible. If he asked you to 
filled sandbags, he was right there with you filling those sandbags. It was like a, no other officer that I had worked with before. On March 29th, 1968, Gary, myself, and the rest of the outfit were on patrol. We were in an area that was relatively flat, very little uh, protection to hide behind. We were walking towards a tree line when shots rang out. We all, of course, hit the ground. Uh, Gary and I were right beside each other. Uh, just a second later, somebody yelled, medic. I started to get up and I felt Gary tap me and say, go. I took off running and realized instantly that I was being shot at. I dove forward towards the two men that were down. And while I was diving through the air, my aid kit and my rucksack that were on my back were shot up quite extensively. Uh, I hit the ground and started working on the one man that was still alive. And just shortly after, Gary comes crawling up beside me and he said, what do you got, Doc? And I said, I have one dead and one seriously wounded. He says, I will cover you. He fired one shot and lowered his head. He had been fatally wounded. The effect that Gary's death had on all of us was a lot. I can only speak for myself. But I knew I had lost a good friend and a leader that could not be replaced. You may never have to make the choice to give your life to someone as Lieutenant Gary Scott did. But think about how he lived his life, always striving to do the right thing and to do his best putting others first, being quick to extend kindness and compassion, being determined and working hard to overcome difficult situations, persevering in the most challenging times, being an outstanding leader that people look up to and accomplishing everything with great humility. I hope you all, students, staff, family, friends, the Loyola community, and financial contributors will use Gary as an excellent example to follow. I extend special congratulations to the recipients of the Gary Scott Award. You were chosen because of the fine qualities you have exhibited. This is an honor that I hope will inspire you to live your life in ways that make a genuine and positive difference in this world. I hope that you will continue to grow into the kind of human being Gary was. For all who are making this work possible through your donations, please continue to give because you are keeping Gary's memory alive and you are affecting the lives of deserving students in his name. Thank you. share uh, stories beyond what we've already done for recipients uh, to react to you know what's gone on here tonight so uh, please uh, feel free or family to comment at this point you know, raise your hand I'll bring the mic to, to you 
Thank you, Jim. Uh, my name's Art Aramino, and uh, I won the uh, Gary Scott Award back in 1971. I think I'm the third recipient of it. Uh, it holds a special place for me uh, because Gary had won my brother John's award before that. And uh, so when I was awarded the Gary Scott Award, and I was thinking on it, and uh, and John's award, and I'm thinking, you know, um, the qualities that uh, Gary and John both exhibited were, were extraordinary. Uh, but I, I really thought hard about the sacrifices they both made. And, and that really struck me hard because I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, d I did work hard in school. Um, you know, I, I um, was on a lot of organizations, played a lot of sports, did a lot of great things, but that whole thing of sacrificing your life. Uh, and I've wondered for years, if put in that same situation, would I have what it took to do the same thing? And I thank God I've never had to be put to the test on that. But that to me makes it very hard to um, say, yeah, you know, I'm in that class because I, I don't know if I am. What Gary did and, and, uh, was just something I, I can't really comprehend. I can't really uh, say I you know, had any experience even close to that. And, and I just <laughs> thank uh, God that I was at least considered worthy enough to, to have received uh, his award. And I, again, I hope I've never put to the same test it was, but I think that's something that uh, we all have to, to, to wonder if we really do have what it takes of some of these people are just unbelievable what they can do. And uh, I, I just admire them. Uh, and <clears throat> back then too, I, I just think that the qualities that um, it takes to win this award uh, serve everybody throughout the rest of their lives. It's not something that you you know you get when you're a senior and it's it's over with and done with. Hopefully, that is a reflection of your life and, and the type of person you are, and it will go on to continue to serve you throughout your life. And uh, so, I just add my congratulations to all the other recipients of the board. And uh, so, thank you. I don't need the microphone. <laughs> um, Jim Bonacquisti, uh, John and I, uh, last year, well, the last five years, uh, did, we wrote a book about the history of Leroy football. And there's one chapter that's specifically about Gary and John. It's called Heroic Nights. Uh, John and I were only two years old when he graduated. Sorry, Sue. I know, now you're telling us. <laughs> but through the research, I really, when I got done, I really felt like I knew him and uh, just proud of him. Grew up in the same community. Thank you guys. This morning at, I don't know, it was before noon, um, I got notice that the Vietnam War Memorial had been placed. Um, over by the Soldiers Monument in Leroy with Gary Scott's name on it. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to go by, um, it will be there forever with both Gary Scott's name and um, Harry Van Alts, both the men from Leroy who were neighbors and friends and grew up together. Um, we're really happy that Historical Society put out a plea for donations and within a very short time we had enough money to pay for that. Um, uh, memorial. So, um, and Derek Monument, I said, I need it by Thursday morning, and they got it done. They only started, I think, on Tuesday. So, um, a big thank you to our, our local folks to make sure that it's there. So, if you're uptown, it's um, right in front of the Soldiers Monument. There's two benches there now. There's the one for the Korean War, and now the Vietnam Vets with Gary's name on it. Wow. 
funny. It's, it's always correct. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted first to also recognize that we have with us um, uh, another classmate, and Lee Hillis uh, and his wife, um, Sandy, have come from Minnesota. So I just thought that you might like to chat with them later because um, they have continued to contribute to make this possible. But in addition, um, I wanted to also point out that Kathy Damon has been tireless working on putting together this incre incredible memory book. And she deserves an incredible round of, of applause and <coughs> thanks. And it is very important to her and to all of us, as we just heard about the financial realities, whether with the Vietnam Memorial or with anything else, that Gary's scholarship continued. And that's only going to happen if all of us and anyone we can reach will continue to be generous. So I urge you to think about that. Jim has business cards. Um, we've got the high school here who we gladly receive um, donations. So please consider giving, and um, I think we deserve a round of applause for Kathy for all of her efforts. Gary Carter. Uh, Gary was my uncle. Uh, Sylvia Carter, Sylvia Scott Carter was my mother um, over on South Street. So I'm familiar with Leroy a little bit. Uh, my cousin was Chris Bowler. So I used to come up and play here on the courts uh, on that team. He finished in 82, I believe, same as me. Um, I mean, my Uncle David will talk about my Uncle Gary. I was four. When, when he passed away. So my images of him are, are just quick flashes. Uh, probably my most vivid memory, my mother uh, was really upset. So my Uncle Gary was whirling me around like an airplane with my <laughs> arm and my leg. Yeah. And he dislocated my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mom went crazy. Um, but it was fun. Uh, when I was a kid, so he would come babysit my brother Scott. Uh, so my brother Scott's not here, he had knee replacement surgery, so he's kind of on the mend. He was Gary's, uh, Gary was his godfather. So my brother Scott went into the 82nd Airborne. The only reason when he went into 82nd is because Gary was a screaming, screaming eagle. And he would tell him the stories about jumping out of a plane and being a paratrooper. So Scott followed his footsteps. He was in Desert Storm and Desert Shield and wanted to be a ranger just like Gary. Um, so growing up, just being, you know, Gary, somebody asked me, I think the, the woman who did the news article, she said, well, what's it like being a legacy? Um, my family was very tight knit. With the exception of my Uncle David, who was in the Air Force around the world, uh, if anybody knew my grandmother, Mabel, uh, everyone lived within a mile radius of Mabel and Bill. And we were kind of like the Norman Rockwells uh, in a different hue. And we were, uh, we were a tight knit family. Um, and it was great. It was fabulous. There was no other place to be. It was a holiday when my Uncle David came to town um, in terms of there was nothing too good and it was great. Um, my cousins are younger, there was eight of us, first cousins, in terms of Bill, Sylvia, Dennis, David, and Gary. Um, and just being, you know, named Gary, I, I heard all about him. I heard he was a star athlete. I heard he was a star student. He was my mother's favorite brother, that's why my name is Gary. <laughs> <laughs> she was not, <laughs> she didn't make any bones about it. Gary was her favorite brother, period. Um, but we had a great family, and we appreciate the Leroy community. Uh, certainly, we appreciate everything that Jim has done. My Uncle Dennis carried on this tradition. Uh, I've moved to Atlanta, I've been in Atlanta probably 25 years. 
and Dennis wanted me to get more involved, but it was very difficult. But we thank Jim, I mean, my family does, in terms of carrying the torch and, and keeping this alive. And Bruce, I've never met Bruce, but I've talked to him on the phone several times. I wasn't here when he actually came to Rochester and met with my mother. Um, so she passed away about six years ago, and uh, I'm going to turn over the floor to my Uncle David. But I just want to say thanks to Leroy. To, it's a great place. I love it. Um, I love coming up here. It's very nostalgic. And uh, thanks. Okay. side of it with Gary and I. We uh, were close and we, there were four boys in my family and my brother Bill, uh, my brother Dennis, <laughs> Gary, and me. <laughs> my sister didn't count. <laughs> They don't count. <laughs> so my, my folks were what you would call uh, party people. Uh, they are just whole body. But every once in a while, they would have company. So Gary and I would have to go upstairs and have some fun or do whatever, but don't make any noise. <laughs> So we got up there and we started doing things that we weren't supposed to be doing. And Dad would say, all right, that's enough. And we would calm down. So another 10 or 15 minutes went by and we got back on track. And Dad would say, all right. That's enough. So about two minutes later, I told Gary, which I shouldn't have done, because he wasn't your distance from me. I said, he'll say it one more time before he comes up. <laughs> <laughs> then I heard the thunder. <laughs> <laughs> On the steps, and I, Gary was sitting over there. He just you know, nonchalant, what me? <laughs> and I got a good, good taste of what a leather belt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but the, the the reality of it was we had a strong family, you know, and uh, one time, one time. You know, I was, I was a little bit shorter, didn't have as much meat. And we got upstairs and we started wrestling. And I think I got a little more aggressive then. In about three or four seconds, he put me down. And I couldn't get back up. <laughs> Do you not know? That was the only time we ever wrestled for power. I found out I can't whoop him. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I found out I can't. And so we just never, you know, we never had 
that again. As a matter of fact, we had a bicycle. I don't know if you remember bicycles back then. A handlebar, wide. We would go to school. Every other day, I would pedal. Now, I, we lived right down the street here, from the intersection, South Street. And we would ride to school. And whoever rode to school had to bring the bicycle back to the house. So we did, just alternate. I carried the books, all the books. He pedaled. I pedaled. And he carried the book. He never left the bicycle at school because I was not in tune. I was busy over at David Stevens' house or <laughs> where I was having fun. And I, and, but Gary, he was, he was always, he was always on the right side. Always on the right side. He knew what to do and that he had to get it done. He would prompt me easily into doing what I was supposed to do. But it was but it was a battle for me to be what he was. He was always a leg up on. We still have a little more time if someone else wants to share. Uh, I really do want to say being in the Scott family has been wonderful. I am the daughter-in-law of William and Mabel Scott. And William Scott, the dad, said one day that you take good care of her. And I wanted to say at the same time, I must take good care of him. Gary Scott, Gary Allen Scott was an excellent brother-in-law. And I remember the fun time of him just talking and just sitting around. He wasn't the type that would want to gallop back, you know, just go out to the family. He was right there whenever we were there. And during the time that he was uh, killed in Vietnam, we were stationed in Italy. And he was going to come over for his R&R. &R. At that time, he had sent us and let us know we are going to come. He said he was going to come and visit with us. And we were so excited because we were going to get to spend time. And instead of going home, I think he just wanted, he just wasn't quite ready to just go home. But he was going to come and spend time with us and then maybe have a little time at home. And I, I really do regret that right today that he was not able to spend that time with us. And I, I think he was an excellent, you, you wouldn't find a better brother in law. You just would never find another like that, like Gary on the stuff. And my son, in honor of him, the first born son, he said, well, I don't know, we said it's not going to be uh, David Franklin Scott Jr. So he said, it will be a Gary Arnold Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Gary Arnold Scott. And he is.
but just to go on that, there's three of us. So my cousin Judy and Moses named their son, their second son, Gary, as well. Um, Gary had a pervasive effect on our family. And it's just, that's the way our family was. We were very close. We were always getting together. And, you know, it, it was a big impact. So, you know, cousin Judy and Moses, obviously, this is my cousin Gary Gilbert. <laughs> well, I'm going to paraphrase something that uh, Kathy Amon said to me that impacted me um, and gave me reason to, to think. Uh, Kathy had been coming, she said, you know, for several years to Honor Center. And uh, that she found it difficult because a lot of things we're reflecting on here today is kind of like, what could have been? What, what uh, you know, I think Gary had the potential to be whatever he wanted to be. And he could have been head of the, uh, Colin Powell, as uh, uh, Lee Hillis commented to me last night when we were reflecting on it. So, but, you can get yourself down thinking about just you know, the loss. And what uh, Kathy reminded uh, me of and herself of is you know, what we've been able to accomplish through the scholarship and through the story and the recipients that we have a, a respectable sample here today and what they're able to do and what their motivation is, is uh, possibly more than Gary might have accomplished, and we should really celebrate this uh, award and think of it posi you know, very positively, not just what the loss was, that this, there's a silver lining in this as well. So G's got, but um, I'm Gregory. <laughs> um, what I can remember, and I was sharing with my sister earlier, is um, when I was a kid, me and my grandma, which was Uncle Bill and Uncle Bill's mom, um, we would ride up to Leroy every now and then. I couldn't wait because I always knew that when I got up there, it's always going to be that good old breakfast with a good old cold glass of orange juice. And then, of course, my cousin I looked up to, uh, Gary. And, uh, you know, I think I was around maybe eight or nine or ten, so as an eight or nine or ten year old, I always had the most fabulous jokes and um, the pranks and stuff, and he would always laugh. And I can always remember the one it was like, Gary, you want to draw? He said, yeah. So I did whatever I did. He said, you want to draw? I said, yeah. He said, you want to do it again? You know, so, so he, was, he was always a, a fun person. and. Um, I, I went into the Army uh, years later, I think 1970, and I, I made a career, but I always, in some ways, tried to model myself after him, you know, because people would always talk about his smile, so I always tried to have one, you know, during my career, and he was, he was a super guy and uh, very proud to be a member of this family, and good to see my cousin. Thank you. <laughs> Um, as another Gary, um, my mother had reminded me of something that happened to me in college, and I just was sitting there contemplating how to explain it and, and what context to put it in. And the context that I realized to put it in is the effect of a human being who's done so much and has this many people here representing him, his life, his legacy. And uh, there's two stories. So we moved to Brooklyn in 77, 78. And I was running around doing things, and someone said, well, get that little rascal, because we were playing football. Rascal somehow turned into Roscoe. And that became my nickname. And my parents said, Ralph, and they met someone, they're like, are you Roscoe's parents? Like, Who's Roscoe? <laughs> I, I and they said, and they said, oh no, his name's Gary. So they came home, and they gently explained to me, you have a name that means so much. Nobody's going to call you. And I never forgot that. I will talk about it, but I never forgot that. 
So I'm in college, and so you have that, that build up, and you've heard so many stories, and you meet your extended, your wonderful cousins, your family, and you, and you uh, for some reason, I always remember when there was something going on, we met the Carters and the, the Scotts and so on and so forth, and out there. Um, I'm seeing my dorm room freshman year at the college, and I'm over two doors down with uh, one of the guys I played college football with and one of the wrestlers playing. And we're watching this HBO special, it's very somber, it's letters from Vietnam. And they're going through the stories, if you guys have seen that. So this was 1987 or 1988. And you can read online, the gentleman's talking to his mom, and he said, and he refers, he goes, but, and we were talking, they were referring to Martin Luther King and what was going on with the rest of the nation. And he said his Martin Luther King was just killed. His name was Gary, Lieutenant Gary Scott. And they stopped and go, and they show his Syracuse um, forestry picture, his, his picture. And I went, because I need that picture. And I went, and I go, on my breath, I go, that's my cousin. I'm a joke, and they're like, shut up. And I go, no. The part finished, I walked out of the room, and I called my mother. And I said, do the Scots know that this is on HBO? And she said, I'm calling Sylvia. So I was blown away, but the point behind it was the effect and the feeling that I had within me and the legacy that everybody, or not everybody, but people have somehow either touched personally because they knew him when he was with us and those that he was touched, but we know him through spirit. So thank you all and thank you, Mom and Dad, for being here. to seven, so uh, this might be the right time and to as, repeat what Tim said, going into the auditorium, we haven't blocked, I don't think there's been any seats blocked off, so you can sit wherever you want. Shane and I usually go down the left-hand side because a few of us will be going up on stage to uh, present the award, but uh, uh, when you come in, uh, it's been suggested if, it, if it's already started, we'll move in quietly and uh, just find a comfortable place. And uh, at, at some point, and they remind uh, recipients and others that we want to take a photo and, uh, and Henry and us because for donors and others who can't be here, uh, and Ed will share a lot, but we want to grab the, the groups together because we think the past recipients, as well as the current one, are very special. And uh, we want to stay in touch and share uh, the story here. So, are there any other comments? Last chance? Uh, well, thank you again for coming, Scott family, the contributors, the recipients, uh, and uh, family and friends. Uh, we appreciate your support. And I think it was a beautiful evening, and uh, the stories that were told uh, were, were just fantastic. There's a great message here, uh, so let's not end it here. Let's use this as a jumping off point for the next 50 years. I may not be here at the end of that, but still <laughs> anyway. But let's, let's keep it going, because this is really too special a story to not share it beyond Leroy and beyond as, you know, one of, just make a couple of comments, made a reflection. When Jane and I walked out after one of the presentations here, a school board member followed us to the parking lot. And to express her appreciation, she said, here at the school, we don't have a sufficient number of heroes anymore today. And Gary Scott is a hero, a local hero that we can be proud of, so. Be proud, go forward, and thank you again for coming.